This is our review of Mission Impossible. Dun 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 dun. Dead Reckoning Part One. Yeah, nice. Uh, if you are interested, this is from our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. People have asked, yes, there are other videos coming to the channel. It's just that I've been very busy mm. and my wife has been in Europe. So That's there true. will be more videos soon other than Caravan of Garbage and these. What's your favourite Mission Impossible theme spin-off theme? And is it is it the it's mi- Limp Biscuit? Is it it's the Limp Biscuit one where yes. it's like yeah 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 Limp yeah. Biscuit is rocking the set. It's like Russian roulette when you're yeah. placing your bet. It's not the one from Fallout. That's like can tick the pressure. Din, 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 din. That one. It's the Limp Biscuit yeah, one. Yeah, I, I know. I was providing the illusion that we were thinking about it. There's no choice. But here. it's Limp Biscuit, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a look around. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, here's the review. Leave a like also. Okay, see you guys. Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One. Pow pow. Uh, the budget of this movie was close to $290 million. Well, that's very expensive. That's right. Well, they're doing big stunts for real, and this shot during COVID. It was one of that's the right. few productions which did not slow down, mm-hmm. and maybe everybody got COVID on a boat or something at one point. Do you remember oh, no. that? No, boat fit. That's boat the worst fit. kind you can get. Something happened. I don't remember. It was a million oh. years ago. This was filmed mostly a long time ago. Wow. Uh, well, you can tell because Tom Cruise on the campaign trail has had time to regrow his hair. He looks completely different mm-hmm. and weird. <laughs> You think? Yeah, his hair's weird. Is it because you've learned he's 61 recently and now you're like that's put his whole life, his entire being into Yeah, into a I don't know. There's some, there's some things at odds there, you okay. know? Okay, all right. I don't know. Anyway, good luck to him. Uh, <laughs> he's got a bright future, that kid. <laughs> so that's a lot of money. Yeah. For a movie that's not doing this well, potentially an obvious nightmare, which we've recently seen. Mm. Uh, but the box office five-day weekend for this in the US is $78 million, obviously less for the just the two-day weekend, uh-huh. which is pretty good. It's potential. It's probably more, though, mm. and it's going to make about, they reckon, I think it was $250 million worldwide okay. in the first weekend. So, okay. Well, yeah. it's nearly covered some of it minus yeah. marketing costs. This looks to be the biggest opening for any Mission Impossible movie, mm. which is not a surprise yeah, considering yeah. the absolute fervor mm. which is happening and the amount of press that Tom Cruise squeezed out before the actor's uh, That's right. strike ended up happening. Yeah, and yeah, he had to yeah. go back in the locker that he lives. That's right. Whatever. Now let me ask you this. He lives in the locker from the Men in Black 2 train station. Oh, it's got a whole universe in it. <laughs> yeah, ah, the actually, weird alien locker. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds a bit like a 15-minute city to me. <laughs> it's got a whole universe within walking distance. I don't know about that. Um, do you think, like Maverick, good word of mouth will, will, uh, will cause a, a Yeah, I think a, this a could carry, this. carry it further. Also, there's not really a... Well, there are big movies like this, but Oppenheimer is not an action movie. That's true. And Barbie is like appealing to a different, you know, mm. a different audience. That's so right. I think that of the action blockbusters of the summer, so it's like this and The Flash and Indiana Jones. Yeah. I think yeah, this one mm. has the potential to carry longer. Exactly. This one has a string of hits in the past. Yeah. It's, it's also got a string of hits in recent memory. Yes. So people remember the last one, enjoying the last one. Mm. Unlike an Indiana Jones, for example. Yep. Uh, it's not tied to a dead universe. True. Um, the dark universe. The dark universe. Yeah. Dodge the bullet there. Absolutely. And also it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I would say it's very good. But before we get to that, what do you think the story was? Oh, come on, mate. Yeah. How much can I reveal in this, I wonder? I would say like they'll, we'll do light spoilers, but uh-huh. we're going to have to say certain things terms of what they're after mm. and what's after them. Yeah. and But if you don't want to know anything, maybe just skip this whole thing, I would oh, say. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, let me tell you this. Ethan Hunt, he loves doing a Mission Impossible. How many times has he done it? I mean... On camera? This is the seventh. This is the seventh, I guess. Oh, but I guess sometimes he's done multiple ones. With yeah, yeah, and I would consider some of his impossible missions like submissions as Ooh. well. Ooh. Yeah. We also find out whether or not he can choose to do them or not. That's true. Apparently they answer to... The president? They, uh, they don't know. <laughs> I don't think they know. I don't think anybody knows. I think they answer to the president. There's some. There's some. I ret- don't think the president. There's some retconning knows. in this movie. I feel absolutely in terms there of is. the background of some of the characters yep. and how the IMF works and so forth. But anyway, Tom Cruise is a big Mission Impossible guy, and then and the, but then he's got to do this. Let's mission. say big in spirit. Oh yeah, if not stature. Yeah, he's a regular sized Mission Impossible guy. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But there's a threat out there. And what is a, it? I'm not going to tell you. Oh. Yeah, you should have watched the movie. You, you said you were going to watch the movie. Did you, James, did you watch the movie? I was joking when uh, I said I was going to watch it. No, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, but there's a new threat on the horizon and yep. it's going to bloody, it's going to bloody, it's it's going to re... Um, it's going to put all these skills to the test. It's going to put all these skills to the test. It's a Mission Impossible movie. And all movie. these mates' one? skills to the test. All these mates are there. Yeah. You know? Benji. Yep. Luther. Lassie. Oh. Lassie. Doug. 
Doug's there. <laughs> the nostalgia critic? Yeah, on the animated cartoon Doug. I was oh, okay, thinking. right. Yeah. yeah, sure. Both. Wow. Yeah, the twins. We need the Ducks. <laughs> There's all, in a, in a, like, a, like an espionage movie, there's all funny ca- characters called the twins. In this That's case, right. it's the two dogs. Now, before we get into anyway, like... Was that a good summary of the plot? I think it was great. Yeah. I think there's going to be like levels of spoilers because we also have to give spoilers for what the villains are. So I think maybe there's like three levels to this. But okay. I just want to talk about the original opening scene for this. Okay. And what there was going to be was a 25-minute cold opening set in 1989. Now, we catch yeah. glimpses of that in this movie. Mm. My understanding of Ethan Hunt was I always assumed he came straight from the military and that's he's why got he's the got haircut. the haircut. Mm-hmm. And they might have even said that in the movie. I don't remember. I oh, the first like, movie? Yeah, I watched right. it like three uh-huh. years ago or whatever. But yeah. Christopher McQuarrie came out with a quote about doing a de-aging 25-minute sequence. Right. Uh, and, and this is re- very interesting, especially when you compare it to a movie which did this last week. Yeah, did a lot of this stuff. Like there's a train chase. <laughs> yep. There's a train chase last Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Now, let me ask you this, James. Did they film this? Mostly. And, and snip it. So there is, so 25 minutes oh, of it doesn't yeah, exist so, Oh, I think some of it because he said, never did I find myself actually following the story. I was so distracted by an actor that I had known for however long uh, who was now suddenly this young person. Right. And I found that. Looking at Harrison Ford, I found it really hard to focus on the scenes because you what was like, happening because I'm just looking at his face the whole okay, time. Okay, and you're like, he looks young sort but of not looks quite like how he, he looked. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I right. think the way you have to do it is you have them speak less, mm-hmm. you do it in shadows. Yeah. And that's because he talks about how we would have potentially done it, but ultimately he found it distracting and took it out. And I think that shows incredible restraint yeah. to do that. Because that's twenty five a 25-minute de-aging yeah. sequence cold open. How many millions of dollars is that? And he went, no. Nope. Yeah, and again, maybe they did it. Yeah. Or some of it. Yeah. Some tests at the very least. It seems like they did. But during this movie, Mason, the myth of Ethan Hunt grows. Now – I find Tom Cruise's redemption arc fascinating. Okay. It's something that people... This is, this is not an Ethan Hunt thing. This is this no. is Tom Cruise the celebrity. Just the idea that, like, there was a time when people are like, what a weird freak. Mm-hmm. What Absolutely. is he up to? Why is he jumping on those couches? Yeah. Why is he shooting a lightning bolt out like of his Like, his hands? relationships are all weird and have all mm. this... What does Oprah sh- think of this? Yeah, like, shrouded in, like, weird mysteries. And mm. if you look into, like the divorces that he's had, and in particular the one with the Katie Holmes and all that. And I don't want to get into the specifics of it. And all the Scientology shit, not to mention, I mean, it's all tied in and whatever. Mm. But, like, it's completely come around to, like, yeah, he's real weird, mm. but that's that's what we love about him now because he's trying to kill himself for us. Is that that's where true. we're at? Yeah, Because, so. look, as someone who, like, you look at his history and go, weird, don't like that. What a very compelling person who makes movies and he's mm. in movies, you know? Absolutely it's right. It's just, I mean, they've, he's turned us all around yeah. for the most part, yeah. I feel like. Do, do you have any <laughs> thoughts on that or is that just? No, I mean, you know, I, I, and I also think that's probably a very deliberate PR choice because he doesn't. Absolutely. He doesn't talk about it. No. I don't even remember him ever talking about it really. No. But, I mean, I think, I think especially now they've probably said like, don't talk about it. Just be the guy who loves movies yeah. and makes movies and be compelling. Give the audience what they want. Exactly. And Shut I, up. I think if there is a strategy, if there is any kind of religion-based strategy to this, it might just be like be compelling and charismatic and yeah. have people find their own way to it. Yeah. Maybe. I think, you, I I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. And I have. Yeah. <laughs> You've, you're back. I'm a pastafarian now. Absolutely. I'm the guy with the colander on my head. Did you not notice it earlier? No, I noticed it. Okay. I just think it's really cool. Thanks, man. But I didn't want to draw attention to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so we talked about how uh, I read it, like the, the headline of review last week where in this movie Tom Cruise fights God. It's interesting because he, he metaphorically does that mm. in a very literal sense. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, should we do some spoilers for what the villain is? Yes, it's big time spoiler time, folks. Or just in general, or just the villain? Because I think there's further spoilers. We yeah, can just spoil. no. Okay, it's just the villain. We're talking. Yeah. About, I mean, there there is a there is a human villain from uh, Ethan Hunt's past. Yeah, who is not from a previous movie. He is a no. He's, he's a new. He's been retconned in. Yes, he's a. He's he would a, have been in that. You see, you do see some of that flashback. Yes, he's in eighty nine, and he, he's in he it. is part of. Ethan Hunt's pre IMF past. Yes, uh, and and uh, and they, they when Ethan Hunt was in his grub era. That's exactly running right. through the sewer, yeah, yeah, yeah. licking the walls. Because we all assumed that he went, that he went crew cut and then MI two hair. Yeah, but it seems like he had MI two hair, then the crew cut, then MI two hair again. He was getting in line. Mm. Exactly. Uh, but anyway, uh, this has been in most reviews. I, feel, I think so. I feel. Yeah. The the this villain, this human villain. I guess I, by saying human villain, I've 
really spoiled. Yeah. It's not a dog. <laughs> it's a walrus. <laughs> this this villain uh, is doing the bidding of an AI that's become sentient. Yes. Uh, and and uh, is is engineering various espionage acts around the world yeah. uh, for its own ends. I thought it was really interesting that it started in like – social media and changing the news slightly and it would like influence political events just a little bit and whatever mm-hmm. and then how it built from there. Oh. I just thought that was a, a really interesting way to put to like look at AI in a movie because I yeah. know that um, Vin Diesel was talking about doing AI for the next Fast X movies. Right. And somebody actually sent this headline to us and I think it's quite fascinating. I'm oh, and speaking of, um, speaking of a movie that does uh, something that another movie did recently but way better. Car uh, Chase. In, Car Chase in yeah, Italy, yeah. Exactly. So this is from uh, Fabberg Z who says, I thought you might appreciate this pull quote. Uh, it's from this Sunny Birch Review who says, imagine the Fast and Furious series but good. Headlined by a genuine star featuring coherently shot set pieces and looking like they exist in something like the real world instead of a CGI composited bag of garbage. (laughs) But also there's a lot of CGI in these movies. Yeah. There just has to be for it to exist in the way that it does. But because so much of it is real Mm. and so much of the promo is built around that, it's like when they talk about Top Gun Maverick and they were like, this is all real planes. It is absolutely not. That's true. That movie is like 70% CGI, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the action sequences. But, you know, or that's... visual effects. Visual effects, I should because, say, Because yeah. uh, I believe Nolan quite recently said there's no CGI in Oppenheimer. Yeah. And he's right because there's no fully created digital world yes. that we're just looking at, like the screen of a video game. Yeah. But there is plenty of scenes that are have a physical real world basis and then they put digital effects on top of that yeah. which is which is visual effects then you've got jar jar binks waving jar jar binks is there and he's like Mis- the- misa become death destroyer of worlds he said <laughs> you know so the only man who can stop the ai seemingly and the ai knows this they call it the entity mm. is tom cruise because it seems like the ai has figured out that everybody has a pattern and a weak point and something like something you can push somebody on or break mm. them or manipulate and them and ethan's his friendship yeah but he also it, and that it, ankle he broke during the ankle he broke but also it's ethan hunt seemingly cannot be predicted right. and he's straight cuz he's the living manif- <laughs> manifestation of destiny what's the quote there was a quote i even wrote it down in the movies i don't like to pull my phone out in the movies so this, you said, sorry, everyone, I'm, I'm getting this my phone down. out in the movies to write this down because I think it's important for my podcast. That's what I said, yeah. Can yeah. I find this note? Oh, which reminds me, before you get to that, so so the villain Gabriel, Yeah. so it's it's, a, it's getting quite biblical in here. What is uh, it? it? That's Isai Morales, who people might know as Deathstroke from Titans. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, but he's great. Yeah, I agree. And really also good very, this. very sinister in that kind of, he's got a... He's got, a, he's got an evil glint to his eye because of this Ooh. character, in addition to uh, serving this... He's serving this this AI villain because he likes suffering in the world, and he yes. thinks that this 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 uh, this AI is going to bring that to the people who deserve it, or have you. And also, what a wonderful autumnal uh, color palette this guy is working with. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, he's got he's wearing his suede jackets and he's wearing cranberry and sandalwood and all sorts of colors. He's looking amazing. How's he pulling this off? I don't know, but he's the best dressed villain I think that oh. Mission Impossible's ever had. I don't name a better that. one. I won't. Philip Seymour Hoffman. No. I love Philip Seymour Hoffman. You would. These, these don't compare. So, oh, I just put my phone away. I just <laughs> found the quote. Oh, yeah. He's referred to as, because at the start, Ethan Hunt's gone rogue. You're not going to believe it. Mm, 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 and he's referred to as, and the, and the government, they're telling a big government guy about the impossible mission force. They're telling Mr. Carrie And Elvis. Rob, um, what's his name? Thomas. No. From Matchbox 20. No, he's from. Friend of Santana. No, he's, in, he's in Deadpool 2. Rob Corddry. Yes. No. no. Rob. Ah, he's also in he's Hobbs big and on Shaw. Twitter. He's big on Twitter. There's two Fast and Furious alumni in it. Rob Delaney. Rob Delaney. And it's also one of the guys chasing him. Shay Wiggum. Yeah, is from... We're talking about him later. Fast 2 or yes. 1? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Anyways, they're explaining to some government bigwig the deal with Ethan Hunt, and he's described as a mind-reading, shape-shifting agent of chaos. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Supporting cast, as you mentioned, though. Rob Delaney's in this for a scene. Carrie yep. Elwes is the, is the... Love that. He's yep. the director of National Intelligence. Pom Clementif is the Joker. Yep. <laughs> That's in right. this movie, yeah, 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 I don't know if you've noticed. Uh, we get Vanessa Kirby and uh, Rebecca Ferguson are back, yep. and of course we get the debut of Hayley Atwell. Yes, as, uh, and she's great. I this. really like her in this as well. She's yeah. she's a she's a like a professional globe trotting thief. Yeah, who steals big stuff for clients, who gets jumps in on this and is mm. sort of immediately in over her head, which I think is great. 
I, I, thought, I like the I like the idea behind like she knows what she's doing and she brings a new set of but skills to the table. Does. And but but there's a whole other level. I like the idea that we're we're bringing in like a more of a civilian. Yes. you know what I mean to observe this stuff and be like, oh, this actually is crazy. I thought initially it was going to be because the entity is like is manipulating everything all the time. Uh-huh. So when when he f- comes across her initially, I thought it was going to be that she was just a normal person and the entity just made him think that she was this other person. Oh, right, right, right. But I right, like right. the idea that she's got all these pickpocketing skills and whatever. I would say this, though, Mason. There is some weird stuff in these movies when you look back in relation to to women in this and the relationships that Tom Cruise has with mm. them within the movie, the Ethan Hunt character, and the promises that he makes to, like, love and protect them while simultaneously often churning through these characters and actors. Mm, yeah, yeah. And there's some parallel that to be made yes. with, like, Tom Cruise real life as well. Yeah, yeah. Is this an accident? I mean, surely, like, it's not an intentionally like, thing like, I mean, to draw attention to. I, I don't to. know if it's an accident. I, I, I imagine part of it could be... Because he's like, I'm the best that I'll protect you, but I can't protect yeah, you. Yeah, but I also think it's probably just... There, there must be an element, I think, of just Hollywood's... The Hollywood machine, like if you're a Tom Cruise, yeah. you can go, you can be in a movie franchise for 20 years. But if you're a woman in Hollywood, yeah. you've only got a couple of oh, years absolutely. in you before Hollywood's like, oh, 29, too old kind of thing. Yeah. You know, because we had like, we had Emmanuel Bout in, uh, in Too old in for one. 61 year old Tom Cruise. Well, exactly. Cruise. Who's, and she would be the, you remember? Um, yeah, I remember. She's in the first one and she would be like just a few years younger than Tom Cruise. Yeah. Uh, and then Tandy Newton in two. Yep. And then who, who's in three? Oh, it's... um. She actually came back. She did come back, yes. But then sure. who's... Paul, Paul Patton. Uh, Paul Patton didn't come back. Yeah. Here's the thing. I think to this franchise's credit at this point... Uh, Emma- Emmanuel Barrett is 59, yes. yeah. Uh, I think to this franchise's credit, we have kept... Rebecca Ferguson yes, and Vanessa Kirby right, yeah. for a couple of movies. Yes. And they haven't discarded them already. Yeah. You know? But you're got... saying they should. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> How do you feel about the the religious metaphors and allegories in this? I I mean it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Well, I think what I think is the most interesting about this is that Is it supposed to be a false god or is this the Christian god? Like what does it represent here? Because I the, think because the entity yes. and they, there's two words you're gonna hear a lot. The Three entity. words, I guess. The entity and the key. Four words, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Two of those words are the same word. Yeah, yeah. I think that the entity is a metaphor for AI in Hollywood. I think it's God. Oh, you think it actually is God? Because if the key that you use to... Because it looks like a crucifix. It's a crucifix. As you mentioned, Gabriel, yeah. who is a soldier of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think all, and the idea that Tom Cruise is this unstoppable force that God fears, mm. I think that is also... Yeah, but I think... I think this is That's a, also what I like about yeah, it. It's yeah. like, what is this? It's it's very Metal Gear Solid. The yes. franchise has become Metal Gear Solid a little bit. It's a little bit weirdly supernatural now. Yeah, like I said, the vibes in this movie are kind of insane a little bit. Yeah. I think this is a metaphor, and I think the AI is because it's it's a being that wants to put the IMF team out of work, essentially. Yeah. Maybe by destroying the world, but maybe by making them obsolete. Yes. But Tom Cruise doesn't want that to happen. Yeah. He Wants to keep working. Yeah. I think the next one, they're going to prove that AI isn't good enough. And it's just, I mean, obviously they're going to defeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, you know, it's going to be about how the human spirit and collaboration and friendship Absolutely. works together and is more powerful than a being that is just churning through probabilities. Or, or a whatever. bomb. Or a big bomb, a big nuclear bomb that isn't. Or a movie that bombs. Or a movie that bombs. But what I think is great about all of that stuff and all the things that, like, I read into these movies and, like, the actor in real life and the storylines uh-huh. and, and what this means and whatever, most movies are just like, and, and then this, 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 and this. Yeah. Whereas here I'm walking away, I'm like, what the fuck was that about? Right. And not in a way that's like, I don't know, not in a way that's, you know, that's like that was confusing it's and why did you do on. that? It's yeah, it's something to chew on. Exactly. It's something your brain to chew on after you've left where a lot of, you know, we have <laughs> – I've I had fun with the movie Black Adam, but I haven't thought about it since. <laughs> I think about it every day. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, and you, you you're like, God, what? This is quite meaningful. I was going to say, there's a lot of what I would cons- what I think is deliberate throwbacks to the first Mission Impossible in this. Yeah, Appar- I mean, there's characters. There's there is, Kit- well, Kittredge is back. Yeah, Kittredge is back. Apparently, according to Macquarie, because there's a there's also like. There is the scene with Kittredge and, and Hunt. They're, all, they're it, also on a train. They're on a train and there's, there's a bunch of Dutch angles and all this sort yeah. of stuff, which was like very Brian De Palma in the first movie. But apparently, according to Christopher McQuarrie, none of it was like purposeful throwback. It was like what fitted That's 
interesting. In the yeah. moment, in the scene, like whatever whatever angle worked best for the yeah. scene, that's what we put in kind of thing. But, but, but I feel like a lot of this, like he's got his Mission Impossible yeah. one hair back. He does, Not yeah. entirely, but it's the closest it's you could shorter. get. It's shorter. No, it's, 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 it's short, I'm saying. It's short, yeah, but yeah. It's, it's not as short as he, because I don't think a man of Tom Cruise's age now could do the crew cut. He's also wigged up for some of this. And I think it's reshoots and also some stunt work. Oh, before I mean, if, if we can, if we can divert again. Yeah. Speaking of wigs, yeah, it's the summer of Shay, as far as I'm concerned. Summer of Shay. Shay Wiggum. What are we talking about? What is all this? The, all the winter of Wiggum. Shay Wiggum, the guy, one of the one of the agents who's chasing him. Oh yeah, Shay Wiggum. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Incredible hair in this, on this guy. How does he do it? I don't know, but I'm loving it. What's his secret? I don't know, but I saw his. I saw his. Character poster some yeah. weeks ago, and I'm like, that's unbelievable hair. But in motion, <laughs> 54 like, years old. Normally, we talk. Of, normally, I would I would say normally, when we get to the Weekly Planet Awards at the end of the year, the awards that mean nothing and nobody cares about. That's not true. No, it's true. Tom Cruise would almost certainly get a nomination for best hair or wig. Not this year. I think Shay Wiggum's getting the nod. I agree. You know, so he's in Fast and Furious. Four and six. He's also Captain Stacy in Across the Spider Verse. Oh my God! Yeah, he's a, it's the Summer of Shay, is what I'm saying. I'm glad he's doing it. Yeah, me too. Movies, movies. That's a good movie. That Spider Verse movie. I agree. A lot of people don't think that. <laughs> is that true? No. <laughs> what are we talking about? I've lost. I've lost the thread. Uh, hair. I derailed the thread. That's okay. Uh, uh, well, speaking of derailing, let's talk about stunts. Okay. So the big one, which I wasn't that impressed because I'd seen it a million times, yeah. was the big jump on the bike. Yes. I mean, that is objectively spectacular, and he did it for real at all of those things. Yes. But, like, by the time I saw that, I'd seen that 150 times already. Here's a, here's a, but there's other things in this. Yeah. Here's a stray thought. I was going to uh, bring it up later, but I know I'll forget about it. This movie is also filmed on digital. Yeah. None of the others are. No. Which is interesting. Why? Because I feel like digital video is the motion smoothing of cinema. And I feel like mm. Tom Cruise would be against it, but this is on digital and you can tell. There's a scene, There's a fight on the top of the train. Yeah. And I think it looks good, and I'm sure they did a lot of it for real. Yeah, but it does. It's got the weird there digital kind of sheen the, over it. I don't. Yeah, I don't disagree mm. with that. I think a lot of the time with digital, you genuinely can't tell, mm. like if it's done properly. Right. But no, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, there is a scene you see it in the trailer. There's a scene with um, Haley Atwell and Ethan Hunt. Yeah. Character and actor. Yes. Uh, on on a train, it's kind of a yeah chase within the train. Very intense. Very intense, it. I agree. And, there's, of course, there's a scene quite early on in an airport. Yeah. And I loved it. That was really, a, you know, And there's also a really fun car chase. Yes, they're in the street. In a tiny little theatre. Yes. Which I loved. He's, and he's doing it one-handed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And the back and forth in that, and there's a little joke, and he's like, hang on, I just need a minute to, like, adjust to this car because I've, you know, mm-hmm. all the tech's different. And, you know, yeah, right, Just right, give right. me a second to kind of – there's little little bits of humour yeah. in this. I was going to say, so if if you recall uh, Mission Impossible Fallout, and I know Always. you do, there's a mo- there's a, there's the, the scene towards the end where Ethan has to get the remote trigger and get the fuse out of it while uh, Benji and Luther have to uh, defuse separate bombs and everything's happening at once and it's very yeah. exciting. I felt like similar vibes with the airport – Situation, yes, but the, and there's so much going on. You know, there's they've they've gone. Okay, well, how can we top that? How can we top that right out of the gate? You know, the yeah. the the very intense scene at the end of the last one. How can we make it even bigger for the start of the new one? And it's it's Ethan and and Benji and Luther, and they're all working together. And there's even more layers going on. Yeah, absolutely. I have some questions about it, which we'll we'll talk about in spoilers. We'll talk about I think. it, yeah. But should uh, we get into some spoilers? Yes. I'll oh, just quickly sleight of hand is returned. That's right. Has returned. Again, back from Mission Impossible yeah, 1. I think this is easily the one that is most like the first movie. Mm. I think this also has something which all the other movies don't have except the first one, just that fucking bug-eyed paranoia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not in the same sense because right. that movie is people are just staring and sweating at each other. <laughs> it's true, yeah. There's a real weird intensity to that movie, which I yeah. love, the first one. And this has a weird intensity. It too. does. And, and I think I think it is that entity thing where it could be anybody or see yeah. you at any time. And... Yeah, right. Or what I also thought, and again, I'm not I'm not looking with these movies, they are they're fun. There is a lot of sincerity to them. Yeah. And I'm not looking for Marvel like quips and so on and so forth. But everybody really just accepts the entity at face value. Yes. You notice nobody's ever like, "Are you sure though?" I'm okay like, with I think, it. I think if you were like, "Hey, there's a there's an AI in my computer and it's yeah sending me goatsy and so forth," <laughs> I'd be like, "Are you sure?" No, that's me. That's yeah. me, Nick Mason. 
I'd be like, are you sure or is it just a guy messing yeah, but with you? Also, like, I'm a I'm a guy. Yeah. I'm a normal person. Right. Th- these are the people at the top of their game. Oh, I guess who, that's true. They yeah. work in this industry. Yeah. But I mean nobody nobody is like, are you sure it isn't a spy or something? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You know? Well, it's not. I think it might be. Or it is. I think it might be a guy. Well, we'll talk about it. Let's do we talk about movies. spoilers? Yeah. Yes. I'm going to say best movie ever. I'm a great also going to say best movie Where ever. would you rank this in terms of Mission Impossible movies generally? Bearing in mind, we generally say Fallout is the top. Yep. Uh, and everything else is below. I think one and one and Fallout are my favorites. Mm-hmm. And this is yep. probably just below that. What about you? Uh, yeah, okay. I think I'm... Fallout's probably more fun. And, yep. and the, the bombastic kind of yep. nature of that I enjoy. Uh-huh. Like the kind of that's got like a real smash and grab kind of feel yeah, to it, right. which I like. I think I my my top two are probably Fallout and then Ghost Protocol. Yeah, I would probably. Put I think it, Ghost Protocol after the building kind of is whatever. That's yeah. You're so right. that's why I put that a little bit lower. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I do love Ghost Protocol. I'm probably. I would say it's probably on par with one. Yeah. So I would say probably equal third ish. Sure. Third or fourth, somewhere around that area. Yeah. I reckon. I also think three is very good. Oh yes. Oh, and. Yes. Uh, Two is bad. Oh, wow. Where's it's five? Fun. Where's five? It's pretty good. Yeah, upon a rewatch, I enjoyed recently, five it's, it's quite, a lot more than I thought really I did. Not, it's initially. really nice. Mm. Uh, anyway, it's big time spoiler time. We're going to do all the big spoilers. Yep. So so the big the big quest in this yeah. is, and they reiterated it 100 million times in this movie, so you don't miss out. Yep. Uh, if, if I was critical of this movie, I would probably say... More than any of the other ones, it does feel like they're going. Well, the audience is kind of dumb. We better we better reiterate this plot okay. again and but again. But you're saying if you had a criticism, yeah, I do. But, but this, I, ha- this I don't have this. Is no, I don't okay, have any criticisms. But the plot is so the 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 entity has spread itself all over the internet. It cannot be stopped except yep. its original source code. There's a there's a remnant of it in a downed, crashed submarine, yep. which is under some Arctic ice, mm-hmm. and it can be activated with two pieces of a key, yep. which was originally for their silent running drive or their... Something like something that. Something like that. So if you get the two pieces of the key... It looks like a Jesus cross. It does look like a Jesus cross. I don't think that's an accident, Mason. It's like one of those fast Jesus X's. Yeah, man. Um, but if you get the two pieces of a key and if you make it to that location... You could presumably you could you could access the original source code with the key, and you could either control the entity or destroy it. Yeah. So obviously, or a and, different thing. Yeah, you know, a different thing. So every all the governments want to control it. Yeah. And Ethan's like, well, I got to go rogue. We're all going to go rogue. We're going to get that key. We're going to destroy that entity yep. because it's AI and that's taking away writers' jobs. <laughs> so that's right. That's what he says. Yeah. But you have a theory. Yes, that it's a third thing. I don't have a theory, but I have a, I have a, oh, I have a, I have a wacky fan. A wish. Service. I have a wacky fan service request. Is what I, I love want. this, by the way. Oh Let yes. Me just say, I think there's a good chance this could be a, like a third thing could happen. Right. But I don't necessarily think it's gonna. Anyway, go on. Okay, so I want like because this one is a th- is is deliberately or inadvertently a throwback to the first Mission Impossible movie. Yeah. And also, I think it's odd that everybody again is taking as given that this AI is this sentient being, and it, it's it's operating under its own steam and it's decided to control the world or what have you. Yeah. I am hoping, but not really, but really, that it's going to be Emilio Estevez from Mission Impossible 1. And is he in the submarine? He might be in the submarine. No, I don't think he's in the submarine. Do you think it's going to be this like... This is my Emilio request of his. <laughs> Do you think... If that- Christa McQuarrie is listening, if you could bring back Emilio Estevez. Do you think yes. there's going to be like... Ethan's going to decode something and it's uh-huh. going to say, hasta lasagna, don't get anything on you. And they're yes. all just like, oh, my Whoa! God. Oh, my God. Now, look, this is a man who took an elevator to the face. Yeah, he really did. So He got those. He got yeah. the classic elevator spikes through the brain. So you think he survived this yes. and he's become like a Bond-like. Yes. Or even beyond that. Yes. But just a man with no, like his physical form is ruined. So he is. Well, become, his face is ruined. His so face is ruined. I think too. the rest of him's fine, but his yeah, face okay. is messed up. And he's man. plugged into the internet, and he's going. Not even. I think maybe he's just a. Or he's just sitting at big monitors. Or look, I would. I would be happy with. Look, I'd be happy with a new thing that surprises me, if yeah. I'm honest. But I would also be happy with. He is dead, but some of some some code he wrote back in the nineties okay. is the basis of this, okay. and he's in it somehow. Well, that would. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if there is some kind of callback to that because this there's a lot of callbacks in this to one That's and the I'm origins saying, of Equal, uh, Equal Hunt. Equal Hunt. <laughs> Equal Hunt. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Ethan Hunt. But one thing that I thought it could be, and maybe it still could be, is that the villain Gabriel, mm-hmm. who was the guy who shot Tom Cruise's original love because he mm-hmm. churns through women. 
yeah, yeah. Uh, in this. Anonymous lady. Anonymous lady. Is that... Well, I think gets a... I think she gets a title credit. Well, probably. Probably, yeah, anyway. She's probably a real person. Yeah, she's almost certainly... Real. Also, Elsa dies in this, which is very sad and whatever. Mm, uh, from Frozen? From Frozen, oh yes. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, that was... That, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, that sucks. She's really good in these movies. Maria... Mar- Mariella... Gariga as Marie, a woman from Ethan and Gabriel's past seen only in brief flashbacks. She is in the title sequence. Oh, okay. So, dun, 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 I mean, maybe dun. it's a case of she filmed it and... Did it, it died? No, uh, but I'm saying I, yeah. the fact that they filmed so much of it, oh, you contractually think, she has to get a yeah, title credit. You'd think, think that would be, right. be in... Yeah. Because she doesn't speak. You'd no. think it would be anyway. She's just like, ah, and yeah. she's shot. Yeah. Anyway, I thought Gabriel, there was a chance that whoever that guy is, he's long dead. And the entity has brought this guy back from the past and just putting the mask on, like, multiple people. Oh, right. So Gabriel is actually, like, nine different men oh. with different abilities that he's that the entity is using to get to Ethan Hunt. That's why he's so good at sword yeah. fighting and et cetera. Well, I was like, who is this? It's the dog. <laughs> it's Claire. I'm back early. Ah, I'm no. mad, but I'm mad at you. She's big, too. She's gotten bigger. <laughs> Mason, <laughs> run. <laughs> It's getting late. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Um, boy to, oh, yeah, no, that would explain why he's good at martial arts and he's yeah. good at et cetera. And, you know, the, the entity is gone. Well, this is a this is a face from your past that, yes. that can rattle you in a way that nobody else seems to yeah. have been able to since. So, But also I can buy that, like, the entity found this guy because he's the guy that bothers Tom Cruise the most. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I just think it would be more interesting <laughs> if he's not – if he's not real. Mm, he's, you're a real Tom botherer, so we're going to bring you in. Um, I'm a pother botherer. Oh, I'm a pother botherer. Just middle name, everybody. Um, I also think there's a char, There's a chance that Benji is compromised or oh, will yeah. be compromised. Interesting. Because he's the guy who's like, I love all my friends. That's true. And then true. the computer's like, well, if you love your friends, why don't you shoot them for me? I don't want to, though. Well, you have to. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It's just like Halo, Benji. Oh. oh. <laughs> Which one? Bad ones, I don't know. <laughs> it's one of them uh, Master Chief, he goes rogue or whatever. It's like know. the show, the yeah. TV show they made. Oh, no, that was bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, so there's a little bit of a retcon. Yeah. Uh, which is that the IMF seems to be composed almost entirely of, like, ex-criminals. They've gone the yeah. uh, they've gone the route of, like, well, if you're good at crime, you're probably also good at saving the world. Yeah. A little bit of that. If you want. Yeah. And also a lot of them appear to be... Like sleeper agents, basically. Right, yeah. Like he meets one at the start who's just delivering, the pa- seemingly. He probably isn't just a Uber Eats guy or whatever. Right. But maybe a lot of them just do that. They yeah. they do a job until Maybe it doesn't pay enough. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't pay a living wage. Maybe you should unionize IMF agents. Mm. It'll be tricky because you're all in masks and none of you know who and the other guys will, are. Yeah, no one will believe you when you come mm. forth. Yeah. And be like, Kittredge would pay me more. Good point. Yeah. Kittredge is not his boss anymore, I think. Kittredge is the He's director of the CIA whatever, yeah. 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 Just another guy. Just yeah, but it also I get the sense in this that, as they mentioned, like the IMF don't really answer to anybody or sometimes not at all. Yeah, that's a, a bit a bit vague. It seems to be they answer to the president. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh, and here's a question for you. Uh, the, the opening sequence in the airport, Benji has to – Hey, Jack. Joe Biden. Corn Pop was a bad dude. He's sending messages. <laughs> just, oh, okay, right. Just random, like, right, scramble right. brain okay. nonsense. So Gabriel is go. So so the team want to get the key. The guy who has the key is going to get on a plane. So Gabriel puts a bag that's going to go on the plane. Yeah. The, bomb seem- the, the bag seemingly contains a nuclear bomb. And they're yeah. like, well, that's going to blow that guy up and whatever. Yeah. Uh, Benji defuses the bomb by answering a bunch of riddles. It knows who he is. That's then, when I got the sense that, like, this is going to fuck Benji up. But then there's point. nothing in it. Yeah. What was the point of the bomb? Because I don't think it wants to actually, like, nuclear bomb everybody. Interesting. I think it is the thing where it is trying to save the world and make the world better, and it's using Gabriel, who's like an agent of chaos. Oh. But then we'll dispose of him when yeah, right. the time suits. Interesting. With a yeah. nuclear bomb? With a nuclear bomb. Interesting. Make him eat it. <laughs> it's this bomb. <laughs> Or I'll kill somebody. Maybe, maybe. I'll I don't kill know. somebody you like. Yeah, 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 I'll find yeah. something you like. That's right. <laughs> I don't know what it is yet. Uh, so there's a moment where also they're on a train, mm. and Haley Atwell's like, "I'm going to earn my freedom by putting on a mask and whatever." That's right. mm-hmm. That kind of felt pointless because she was trying to get Kittredge to clear Haley Atwell, but pretending to be Vanessa Kirby. Okay. And I feel like even though she didn't get away with it because they figured it out, mm. she would have left the room, and then the real Vanessa Kirby would have been like, "What just happened?" And then all of that is void. Like mm. I don't think that means right. it's just kind of like. But she did the she did do the classic of like next time I see you I probably won't even remember yeah, this, so don't bring it up. Yeah, like in a minute from now because I'm 
I'm one yeah. carriage away. Also, I'm going to switch clothes real quick. Yeah, and eye color. Yeah. Mm. So, you know. Yeah. But how did you feel about So Tom Cruise gets onto the train in this by doing a big jump and parachuting in. Yeah, yeah. Did he mean to crash through the window and kill that guy? Was that an accident? That seemed like an accident, Felt right? Felt like an accident, yeah. Yeah. Could have killed anybody. I think that I feel like the later movies, especially, they 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 want to humanize him a little bit by giving him like an element where he like he really gets winded really bad. Yeah. So that was that one, and the bit where he has to has to figure out the car. There's some in the previous movies. There's a moment. Well, yeah. There's a few movies where he has a heart attack. Oh yeah, he has that heart attack that time, and de- technically dies. I guess. Twice. So that yeah, 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 Two yeah, separate yeah. movies. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But I like all of that. How do you feel? How do we, I know we briefly mentioned it, but the death of Elsa. How do you feel? That speaks to like again, like Ethan, you, you protect the people you love, but sometimes you can't. He's oh, like, yeah, but I will true. protect you, and she's like, but you didn't protect that other woman who was stabbed on a bridge or whatever. Right. He's like, yeah, but this time I'm going to fly through the window on a jetpack yeah. or whatever. <laughs> that's I'm right. Do it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I would have, would have liked to see Elsa, but I mean, that's the I would have liked to see her live, yeah. but that's the the point of the death is that you like it. That's exactly right. If I felt nothing for that character and she died, I'd be like, eh. you're saying they should have killed Benji. Is what yes, you're that's right. right. Yeah, cool. Um, I like how Luther was just like. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and try and do some coding. You won't you won't see me for the rest of yeah. the, the Mission Impossible. Also, I am I am not gonna stand up for the remainder of this series. <laughs> I'm just gonna be sitting down. Good. I'm wearing a hat and sitting down. Um, I was gonna say um, when I saw the trailer for Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One, yeah, uh, and and Elsa has the eye patch on. I'm like, oh, she lost an eye in yeah. some sort of skirmish or paintball or something, and then. Oh, when what I'm, it really is is funny. Well, yeah. when I watch the movie, I'm like, oh, maybe it's some sort of technique that a sniper uses to yeah. get better aim or what have you. But then I watched an interview, which I think you've also yeah. seen, uh, in which she reveals that um, Rebecca Ferguson had to wear an eye patch because she can't wink. Yeah, on either eye. On either, in either eye, she can only blink, yeah. it turns out. So uh, wild. So Macquarie had to rustle up an eye patch yeah. real quick because they were like, okay, now wink, now now squint through the yeah. sniper scope. And she's like, all right, but Ugh, both eyes that's open. That's wild. Yeah. Why couldn't she just... Blink then. Some people can't. No, but why can't she just blink and then it, and put one eye and in the sky? And they CGI whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, this is cooler. She's yeah. got the best looks, man. That's true. That's What a cool look. Yeah. It's like agreed. a solid snake situation. I mean, she doesn't have Shea Wiggum hair, but all right. All right. Calm down, mm. idiots. Uh, <laughs> anything else before we talk some reviews that people have sent in? Uh, oh, the train's falling and they're jumping from carriages. That's terrific. Really I love that. That was really good. Very Nathan Drake. Oh, yeah. Which was the best movie of last year. Mm. Yeah, I think that was my that was probably my favorite stunt sequence. I mean, there's obviously like CGI in that. Yeah, yeah. You know? But also again, I think you know what? The the motorcycle off the cliff into the the the, uh, the very idea of it, the motorcycle off the cliff yeah. and into the parachute thing, truly insane. The fact that he kept doing it yeah. like however many times and at any moment he could have like got his foot caught in the motorcycle and plunged to his death yeah. is insane. I love that. Yeah. But also again, the fact that it was on digital, like I yeah. could, it, it, you could. There's a moment also where it's got like, they a, had to where like there's a GoPro on him. Oh you know, yeah, when he's like that kind of looks a bit yeah yeah strange. But I think watching it on YouTube, I'm like, wow, that does feel that it does feel insane. Different on the screen, but on right? the big screen yeah. when they had to comp they had to composite out the ram. Yeah, it did feel like I he's agree just he's just motorcycling up to nowhere. Yeah, but yeah, the the sequence in the train where all the train carriages are falling off yeah. the cliff. That looked that was great. Incredible. I agree. Incredible. And they had to keep jumping from uh carriage to carriage. carriage, to carriage and... It's a real Nathan Drake, Tom Holland situation. Absolutely. Here's some reviews that people wrote in, Mason. This one's from Shane who says, I think it's safe to say that movies are back, baby. Oh, great. That's just having just watched Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Mm. Nate says, like all two-parters this year, Mission Impossible 7 feels stretched thin and exposition heavy, but enough action worthy of best movie ever. Mm-hmm. Tiger says... Deaf best movie ever. Seen it twice already. Big stunts, big fights, big everything. Tom Cruise continues to be equally entertaining and terrifyingly intense. And Jacob says, has shown us that the excitement of cinema isn't dead. Best movie ever. I'm very much looking forward to the follow-up of this. We've already seen a little bit of footage with the biplane where Tom's like, come and see a movie or I'll kill myself, you know, and then he flies yeah. off or whatever. If you don't come and see a movie where I attempt to kill myself, I'll kill myself. It looks like he's growing his hair out for the next movie also, mm. which I'm a bit embarrassed about. Wow. Yeah. He's like, time to go back to the old me. Mission Impossible 2 style, anime hair. <laughs> anime hair, yeah. Mm. So that movie has also shut down production, I believe, because yes. of the strikes. Mm. Uh, okay. You know, but that's movies. It's supposed to be coming out next year, but we'll see. Mm. What is coming out next year? We just don't know at this point. Some things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't put it past me if they, it wouldn't put it past them if they just released that 25-minute cold opening sequence. Sure. As like Dead Reckoning Origins. Not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Anyways, all in all, 
They've made a good movie. I want to know what Hideo Kojima thinks of this movie. I don't know if he's seen it yet. He'll, Let's have a look. He writes something. Because the worst thing you can, well, the worst thing I don't know if people follow Hideo Kojima on yeah. uh, on on Twitter, but he will often review a movie and he'll and he'll uh, there's you know he'll put up some photos and he'll talk about how much he liked it, but if he hated it, he won't say anything. Yeah, he'll just be like, saw this, nothing else, and you're like, ooh, kiss of death, ooh, kiss of death. I don't know if he has, but that's life sometimes, you know. That's right. Mm. Don't say anything. Yeah, I'm just having a quick look now, but uh, no, nothing yet. Mm. What's he up to? Hideo Kojima is the, the director of the Metal Gear Solid franchise, for people who don't know. Uh, are you telling me that because I don't know? Yeah. Thank you for telling me. You're welcome. And now I know. Should mm. we move on to the next segment of the show? Yes. What is it? It's called What We Reading. <sighs> what We Gonna Read. Perfect. What's Sweet Relief? <laughs> 